Bronco Mendenhall, one of the more successful coaches in the history of BYU football, coming to Charlottesville, Virginia to help out the Cavaliers starting in 2016, just concluding spring practice. We bring in Mike McDaniel from inside the ACC to help us break down the Cavaliers' quest to get off the deck and get into postseason play for the first time in a few years. Uh, Mike, uh, it's always uh, appreciate you jumping on board here, and it starts at quarterback with his Virginia program with Grayson Lambert, of course, moving on to Georgia uh, last season and uh, winning 10 ball games for the Bulldogs. Uh, Matt Johns took over the reins, 17 interceptions, kind of his undoing last season. Yeah, definitely. Um, did throw 20 touchdown passes, but he was a guy that was the de facto number one. Um, if you remember back 2013, 2014, um, you know, it was kind of like, okay, Grayson Lambert, you're our quarterback this week, but maybe Matt Johns will play next week. And Virginia never really got on track because they were always trying to settle their quarterback situation. But Matt Johns, in extended period last year as a starting quarterback, struggled at times. Um, he did complete 60% of his passes. Uh, threw for nearly 3,000 yards, but 20 touchdowns and 17 interceptions, like you mentioned, isn't the way to, you know, get off to your right foot your first full year um, being the starter. So, you know, he struggled at times, and East Carolina is bringing in an entirely new coaching staff, as we know, under Bronco Mendenhall, and that includes former East Carolina head coach Ruffin McNeil that was kind of unjustly fired uh, last season. It really came as a surprise to many that he was let go by East Carolina. But he's bringing a quarterback with him, Kurt Benkert. He's a graduate transfer uh, from the Pirates. He sat behind Shane Carden a couple of years back. As you remember, Shane Carden was um, having a couple of those big seasons there in the Conference USA. Um, had some, some great seasons for the Pirates there. Um, and Benkert was the backup quarterback there uh, for the Pirates. And then last season, he ended up um, winning the starting job initially, but then blowing out his knee. Um, in the fall, uh, early August. So we didn't see much of him last year at all. And throughout his college career, there really hasn't been many signs of Kurt Benkert actually playing. So he transfers to the University of Virginia. And he's looking to kind of make a name for himself, maybe make play the starting quarterback job here in the fall. From all indications, he had a decent camp. He's a guy who could maybe insert his name into the hat under a new coaching staff, maybe take that quarterback job away from Matt Johns. So that's something that we'll definitely be watching this spring, at least a quarter, or excuse me, um, on into the summer, at least at the quarterback position for Virginia. Yeah, Ben Kirk with only uh, 10 passes attempted uh, in his career at East Carolina, eight completions back in 2014. Connor Brewer, uh, uh, second on the depth chart, uh, heading into the spring play as a junior, another guy to keep your eye on. Uh, Mike, uh, what do you see in regards to the uh, – the production around uh, Matt Johns at this point uh, going into 2016? Yes, obviously Virginia has struggled on the offensive end uh, for much of the last few seasons. And Taekwon Mazel is a guy that came in last year, uh, 671 yards, four touchdowns as a junior. And they're going to rely on him heavily here in his senior year because there are not a lot of pass catchers that are returning off of Virginia's roster from a year ago. They're losing their leading receiver, Kanan Severin, uh, 54 catches for 760 yards and eight touchdowns. He was your de facto leading receiver. He's gone. Taquan Mizell was your second leading receiver, and he was the running back. He had 75 catches last year, um, so he's back into the fold. T.J. Thorpe, um, you may remember him. He used to play at the University of North Carolina. Um, he moved on after his one season at Virginia last season, and Really outside of Mizell, the only real receiver returning to the fold is Evan Butts, who played a little bit tight end, a little bit of receiver, only had 16 catches for 182 yards, did have three touchdowns last year, which was third on the team. So Virginia will actually be re relying heavily on the offensive side of the ball. And some of their younger guys that they brought in um, on the offensive side of the ball, you got Joseph Reed, he's a number 79 ranked receiver in the country, six foot one, 205, um, an in-state product out of Virginia. Uh, he's a guy as a freshman who could have a chance to contribute right away. Um, Hasis Dubois as well, 6'3", 209, another three-star receiver, uh, top 100 at his position. So Virginia's got some receivers that are in the pipeline uh, in the recruiting class, but there's also one running back that we're going to want to keep an eye on behind Taquan Mazel, and that's Trey Harbison. Um, he was one of the best running backs in the state of North Carolina a year ago, and he's coming in as a freshman and could – potentially spell to Quan Mazel at times there at the running back position uh, next fall. So while Virginia is going to be young on the offensive side of the ball, they're definitely going to have um, plenty of talent to choose from here for Bronco Mendenhall and what should be a more exciting offense here 
uh, heading into the future as Virginia enters into a new era um, in their coaching staff. As you mentioned, Mike Mazzell led the team in rushing uh, almost 700 yards. Uh, the concerning statistic there is just the four touchdowns, and more so than that, for a college tailback, the number one guy in the depth chart to only average four flat, 4.0 yards per carry, speaks to possibly his lack of development. He's coming into a senior season. This is the last chance for him to make a big splash at the collegiate level and the offensive line. So uh, that's the negative side is the lack of a push up front. Uh, the positive is that uh, if you look at the two deep depth chart, Virginia brings back nine of 10 offensive line starters and that second team and just need to replace uh, Ross Burbank uh, heading into this fall. If you look at the defense, Bronco Mendenhall pretty much uh, hangs his hat on defense, Mike, and will obviously want to get Virginia back to the type of defense that it was playing just a few years ago under Mike London. Yeah, Virginia's defense, for what it's worth, I mean, they struggled some last year, but it was a pretty tough schedule. You remember they had that brutal um, four-game stretch to begin the season, which include games against UCLA and Notre Dame. So obviously, you know, when looking at Virginia, it wasn't the easiest of starts there to their uh, 2015 season. But, you know, heading into the future, we obviously know that Bronco Mendenhall is known for his defense. He kind of hangs his hat on that side of the ball, and he's kind of the de facto defensive coordinator at this point in time. They are going to have, you know, a couple other um, couple other assistants, you know, helping out Mendenhall in that regard. But he's a guy that really likes to call the defenses, and I think that he'll have a hand in that there uh, for Virginia here in his first season uh, as the Cavaliers' defense tries to start heading in the right direction. Virginia's defense is going to be very young. Um, they're losing a lot of starters on that side of the ball. Obviously, the one guy they're returning at the back end of the secondary is Quinn Blanding. He'll be a junior in what will definitely be, barring injury, his last year in Charlottesville at the safety position. Um, one of the best defensive players in the country um, out of that 2013 recruiting class, or 2014, I should say, uh, recruiting class. And he's a guy that um, really came into Virginia, made a splash right away, um, was all ACC uh, his first season and um, an all, all American as well. So he's a guy that can really make a difference um, there in the secondary for Virginia. It's going to be all about that pass rush. And Virginia has really struggled to put pressure on quarterbacks here in the last few seasons. They got a couple of young guys coming into the fold as freshmen Stephen Moy, 106 ranked defensive end out of Lilburn, Georgia, 6'3, 225 and Christian Brooks, the number 110 defensive end in the country. But he was one of the top defensive ends in the state of Virginia out of Clifton, out of Clifton, Virginia, Centerville High School. Another three-star uh, talent, 6'5", 228. So he's not lacking in size. And he's the guy that could definitely see some playing time right away for Virginia as they move into the Bronco Mendenhall era. Nick Howell is uh, officially the defensive coordinator uh, but we mentioned Mendenhall being a defensive-minded guy and also coming in for the first year, you would expect him to be heavily involved, especially since the Cavaliers are moving from a Mike London-led 4-3 defense to a 3-4 scheme that Mendenhall prefers. So there's going to be a lot of teaching uh, going on as we move into August. Uh, keep your eye out on Micah Kaiser, 14 tackles for loss, seven and a half sacks last season, 117 total tackles as he approaches his junior year at linebacker. Uh, Mike mentioned Quinn Blanding, who's an up-and-coming star in the ACC. 115 total tackles from secondary position. A lot of production lost off this Virginia defense, though, with Mike Moore moving on. 12 and a half tackles for loss last season. David Dean and Trent Corney, also guys that were close to double digits, tackles for loss, and sacks last season. Ian Fry moves on as the kicker. He was very dependable last season, uh, 17 for 22, and an even better junior campaign at 22 for 27. So the Cavaliers hoping that the recruiting has uh, paid off there in the kicking department as well to help out uh, the offense score some points. Mike, any uh, further thoughts on Virginia trying to get off the deck? And Bronco Mendenhall, obviously, he's used to winning. We'll see how the uh, program responds to him as they try to get back to a postseason play. Well, their offense should hopefully be better. Um, they really struggled the last couple of seasons, as we already mentioned. But uh, when looking at Virginia overall, uh, top to bottom, it's going to be a team that's definitely rebuilding. But I think they have the coaching staff of Bronco Mendenhall, a guy who's been proven out there at BYU uh, to produce winning seasons year after year. I think this is a great hire for Virginia and a guy that can definitely lead the Cavaliers to better days ahead. 
We'd like to remind everyone that as we move through the summer, we're going to be break, breaking down positional units across the ACC, every team, every position. So we're going to get that ramped up very soon. So for Mike McDaniel from Inside the ACC, this is Mark Rogers. We will catch you next time.